Angry Guy here, and today we're discussing why Western society has now become the mouse utopia. What is the mouse utopia? So what are we talking about? What are we discussing? Well, Western society has entered the mouse utopia phase. It's basically become the mouse utopia. What is the mouse utopia? The mouse utopia is an experiment that was done by a scientist named John Calhoun uh, many years ago. And it was he basically took a bunch of mice. He put them in a in an environment where they had unlimited amounts of food, but the only limitation was space. And the you know, the population kept on increasing, increasing, increasing. However, eventually the population got so large that all the social roles within the utopia, within the utopia were filled. And uh, again, they had unlimited amounts of food, but not unlimited amounts of space. What he observed was he found that the female mice became very aggressive and began attacking the male mice. The male mice the male mice eventually, you know, they fought and fought and fought for the females, but eventually they began to retreat. And from this group, we discovered a group called the Beautiful Ones, who literally pulled back entirely from society and stopped, they stopped, um, they stopped interacting. They stopped interacting with, with, um, they basically stopped interacting with society. They, um, they didn't, they didn't try to court females. They didn't really try to do anything. They basically, sat around and they would eat, sleep, poop, and take care of their coats. And they were known as the beautiful ones because while other mice had marks on their bodies from like fighting fighting for, you know, courtship and so forth, these mice had no scars. These mice, their their coats were beautiful because they kept them really, really maintained. And they were just living their best lives. They were living their best lives. And I mean, this is what this is so crazy. Right now, millions of millions of men are not working, and people are saying, "Well, what's going on? Where are all of these men?" And we know what's going, on. and we know what's going on now. You know, I mean, it's um, it's been it's been going on for decades, but it's only it's really taken off now, especially after the pandemic. But you know, uh, millions of men between the ages of twenty five and fifty four are not in the labor force. And what are these men doing? Well, what they're doing is they're sitting at home, they're they're uh, they're, <laughs> they're they're sleeping, getting a full eight hours of sleep. They're playing, they're watching television and playing video games for six to seven hours a day, and they're not working. Like these are there's a group of men who've completely dropped out of the the workforce, and in addition to that, you also have tens of millions of other men who are just doing the bare minimum to survive because men don't really need much. The average guy, you give him fifteen thousand dollars a year, and he's happy. He's happy. You know, he has his he has his TV, he has his television, he has his video games. You know, maybe he has a, a decent computer, a decent computer setup. These things don't take this. You know, this is this is these are mostly one-time purchases, you know that you know, they'll only have to be replaced every, every you know every five years or every or or even more. You know, I mean, for so far a lot of guys, a lot of guys just don't give a, sh they don't give a shit. Like you know, they're they're like, okay, yeah, I'm living my best life, but um. However, we're gonna look at this video with, regarding the mouse utopia a little bit, and you know. Before I jump into that again, I want to point out to you guys that don't forget that a, a new study has literally found that most women, most women only find 1% of, men, of, of men as attractive. 80% of women only find 1% of men as attractive, right? And uh, you can see this on the screen. I was actually showing you guys this video. Uh, I was actually sh um, doing this video, covering this video, and I decided that I was going to... Uh, jump into this topic, but look at this. Only one profile out of 100 was liked by more than 80% of women. By more than 80%. So 80% of women only like 1% of men. Most women are only pursuing 1% of men. If that does not tell you that we have entered about utopia, I don't know what else does, but we have tons of other 
evidence showing this. I mean, I, I, I just illustrated that, but so many guys dropping out of the workforce are doing only the bare minimum to survive. Now let's let's go ahead and pull up the video with uh, John John Calhoun. He is the person who ran this experiment. Let's go. Ahead. The work of Dr. John Calhoun at the National Institute of Health in Washington D.C. has attempted to answer this question. In a unique experiment that took years to complete, Dr. Calhoun used white mice to study population growth and its effects on individual behavior. In addition to his renowned research papers, he has recorded some of these observations on film. In this 16 cell mouse habitat, utopian conditions of nutrition, comfort and housing were provided for a potential population of over 3,000 mice. Yet in spite of ideal conditions, the mouse population met with catastrophe. Individuals were kept track of by color markings on their fur. Factors which normally control population growth, such as predation by owls or cats, were eliminated. Transmissible disease was also reduced. In effect, the mouse universe simulated the present situation of a continually expanding population of humans. To see how Dr. Calhoun's mouse universe grew, we'll use the familiar population graph again. Within the first 100 days, the mice went through the period Dr. Calhoun called strive. This was a period of adjustment. Territories were established and nests were made. The next period lasted about 250 days. The population of the mice doubled every 60 days. This was called the exploit period. The use of resources became unequal. Although each living unit was identical in structure and opportunities, more food and water was consumed in some areas. As the population increased, most mice associated eating and drinking with the presence of others and crowding developed in certain units. What was really happening is that the women, the female mice, and this is what I suspect were taking up, were, were beginning to take up more resources. The third period, consisting of 300 days, found the population of mice leveling off. This was called the equilibrium period. Dr. Calhoun noticed that the newer generations of young were inhibited, since most space was already socially defined. At this time, some unusual behavior became noticeable. Violence became prevalent. Oh. Excess males strived for acceptance, were rejected, and withdrew. So males began, so violence broke out as all the social roles became filled and the males that were males eventually felt rejected and they withdrew, withdrew from society. Huddling together, they would exhibit brief flurries of violence among themselves. The effects of violence became increasingly visible. Certain individuals became targets of repeated attack. These individuals would have badly chewed and scarred tails. Wow. Other young mice growing into adulthood exhibited an even different type of behavior. It's this one. Dr. Calhoun called these individuals the beautiful ones. The beautiful ones. Well, listen to these mother. Listen, check out these motherfuckers. Their time was devoted solely to grooming, eating, and sleeping. Their time was devoted solely to eating, sleeping, and, gro and grooming. Now, what does this sound like? This sounds like, this literally sounds like the 7 million men who are done working, who have punched out, okay, who have said, yeah, we're done with society, we're done with all of the bullshit, we're not doing it anymore, okay? 
There are 7 million men who have permanently punched out. They're not working at all. They have no jobs. They have made the complete decision to stop working entirely. And it's it's not a, it's not a joke. It is absolutely not a joke. It's very serious. It's a very it's very serious shit. It's very very serious shit. And I'm gonna jump. I'm gonna jump back to the video, but I'm gonna let you see this most chilling metric of all: bike rewards that seven million men are done looking for work and have punched out. Why that's a serious problem? These are not men that are working Uber. These are not, these are not men that are that are like you know hustling on the side. These men have completely clocked out. Even more men are are, are just doing the bare minimum. Tens of millions of men are now just doing the bare minimum. But there are seven million men who have come between the ages of twenty five and 54 who have figured out how to completely clock out of society and do no work. They have made their decision that they will never work another day ever again, okay? And they are refusing to work. They are playing video games. They're spending six to seven hours on average playing video games. They're sleeping, they're eating, and pooping, and that's it. They're not dating, and they're not having sex. Okay, in fact, if we'll even take this a step further, so basically, you know, a study actually found that a significant portion of young men were not having sex recently. And let's see if I can get that article actually pulled up for you because I would love for you to check it out. And it's actually, and you know, so of course, society is trying to say. That the reason is because men, young men, are are, are failures. Young men are um, young men are just don't know how to communicate effectively with women anymore. Because of course it cannot be the women, or they're saying that the women have higher standards now, and these men are just not capable. They're not. They're refusing to meet the standards of these of women, which is absolute insanity. So let's go ahead and look at this right here. Come on, I agree to your shitty policy. But this is just a title. The real reason young straight men aren't having sex. And of course, they're going to talk a bunch of bullshit here. And this was, of, of course, text by Madeline, uh, by Madeline um, Taylor. So of course, uh, it's going to be a woman lecturing on why men aren't getting laid. But in 2019, the Washington Post shared a graph highlighting that 28% of men under 30 hadn't had sex in the last year. A, um, a um, yeah, that's unbelievable. A precipitous uh, rise of sexlessness among young men compared to previous decades. This graph was recently resurfaced on Twitter and has since been cited in countless conjectural tweets pointing to apps like Tinder or the increasing criminalization of sex work as the cause. And um, of course, you know, women are going to. Attached to the to much of this theorizing is the belief that these men are, aren't just celibate, but rather identify with the insult label and the misogyny and violence against women associated with it, and therefore are unworthy of compassion or insight. Wow, guys, the women are so uh, there's there's something else. It here it's here that much misunderstanding lies. These men can speak for themselves and may say they are, there's not a singular problem holding them back from a physical intimacy, but instead, according to several straight celebrate men um, ranging in age 21 to 31, it's an amagali, ugh, that's a hard word to pronounce, amalgamation of circumstances. Yes, the pressure of dating apps and the ambiguity of pornography are some ultra contemporary causes, but the social anxiety and insecurity underlying their abstinence are both respective representative of our current cultural moment and per perennial. Uh, da, da, da. For many young straight men, not having sex, the problem isn't necessarily access. Peter, age 31 from the UK, has had multiple opportunities to have intercourse. I've probably been in the position where it feels like sex is inevitably on the cards and self-sabotage between 10 and 15 times. He says, on three of those occasions, penetra um, penetrative sex was attempted, but not pers uh, pursued to completion. Uh, 
Prior to the COVID-19 lockdowns, he didn't struggle to be women, but never felt com comfortable before be comfortable being himself. I think I'm very shy, and over the years, I managed to overcome that by putting a mask on in public, he said. He says, when trying to impress a girl, I'll either directly lie or, in <laughs> or insinuate that I'm quite experienced in bed, and then I feel scared that they will notice that I'm not when I actually when it actually comes to it. So it's self-sabotage. The pandemic gave Peter a break from needing to wear this mask, but lockdown melt but, uh, but lockdown meant that sex was largely off the cards. On top of this, he says he gained weight from drinking too much. He, he's now stopped drinking, but his confidence remains low. I need to feel absolutely beautiful to even think myself good enough to speak to a woman. I'm very mildly attractive. I'm not very mildly attracted to. He says, yet his low self-esteem often stands in way in the way of this. This relationship with weight and self-esteem is frequently mentioned by other young men who aren't having sex uh, that Huck spoke with, a common theme shared by the male, male demographic. Recent studies suggest that 40% of men are anxious about their weight, with up to 85% worried about their muscularity. Uh, well, here's the thing. I mean, guys, as, I, as I've shown you, you know, women are women are not interested in most men. Eighty percent of women are only interested in one percent of men today. Okay, and men realize that. Men absolutely realize it. They see the writing on the wall, and most women don't want them. And increasingly, more men are getting used to the idea of just not having sex, not having relationships. You know, I mean, think about it. You learn to live without it. You learn to live without it. And you just you just start to chill out, like if your brain begins to rewire itself, because it, it does not become it's it becomes less of a means of survival. You're like, well, I can survive this way. You know, the only reason why we replicate is for survival. You know, we survive so we can replicate, and we replicate so we can survive. But if men are saying, well, you know what, my best means of survival is not replicating, and not putting myself through that nightmare, then why should I? You know, why worry about it? Growing up, Mike, Mike, age 23, from the U.S., and from the U.S., felt that being overweight and the insecurity of stemming from it and preventing him from forming a relationship. Eight, 18, however, he lost 100 pounds and continued to feel the same about himself. He tried to overcome this by pursuing the unusual route of meeting people through dating apps without any success. So, so a year ago, he just gave up. I realized I wanted external validation when I didn't even have internal validation. That's one of the big problems with a lot of the incels. They're looking for external validation. They don't. They're not actually looking for a relationship. They're not looking for. They're not looking for sex. They're looking for validation. So that became more important to focus on. He says, constantly trying to date was a reminder that I wasn't in a relationship. Of course, just because some of these men have given up on sex, that doesn't mean they've abandoned all forms of sexual pleasure. Instead, many have resigned themselves <laughs> to the easy fulfillment of pornography. Jacob, twenty-four, and from. Poland says he was never good at talking to girls, noting a similar lack of confidence as Peter and Mike, coupled with what he's perceived as a lack of bravery in approaching women. I got used to <laughs> I got used to pleasing myself while watching porn. Instead, he says it felt easier and more more safe. But the poor Jacob was viewing only further dampened his self esteem. After watching porn, I got even less confident because all the guys there were much bigger than me. He says. I felt undeserving of girls, thinking that even I, even if I could somehow um, t end up in a sexual situation, I would disappoint my partner anyway. At first, this belief made him angry, not at women, he says, but at the situation he'd been given. But now, he says, he's at peace. <laughs> He's at peace with just admiring the girls in porn and watching other men with them. Instead, he says, it feels right. Guys, cucking, cucking. This is cucking. Pornography is digital cucking. All right, it feels right. Men are men are dropping out of society. You know, Marlon Yiannopoulos talked about this years ago. The sexist. He talked about this like seven years, six, seven years ago. People did not listen, and this is what's happening now. And now men are walking away from society. They're walking away from Western society and Western and Western women. And they're doing as they're either leaving the country or doing as little as doing as little as possible to survive, and in some cases, nothing at all.
I mean, guys, I don't think I'm going to link all the articles. I'm going to link everything that I've discussed in this video, which is a pain in the butt for me because I'm lazy. But, you know, I'll, I'll put it all together. But this is this is the craziest. This is the crazy thing. Like I told you, like right now we're witnessing the beautiful ones. These guys, this seven million people, these seven million guys that aren't doing shit that are sitting on their asses, you know, and just, you know, just, you know, you know, like I am pretty. I am pretty. And, and, and you know, I mean, yeah. They're the beautiful ones. They never involved themselves with others, engaged in sex, nor would they fight. They never involved themselves with others, engaged in sex, nor would they fight. They are men walking away. All appeared as a beautiful exhibit of the species, with keen alert eyes and a healthy, well-kept body. Mm -hmm. These mice, however, could not cope with unusual stimuli. Though they looked inquisitive, they were, in fact, very stupid. <laughs> Dr. Calhoun called the last period the die phase, leading the population into extinction. Although the mouse utopia could house 3,000, the population began to decline in 2200. In the shift from the equilibrium to the die phase, each animal became less aware of associates despite all animals being pushed closer together. Dr. Calhoun concluded that the mice could not effectively deal with the repeated contact of so many individuals. The evidence of violence increased to the point where... It's kind of like dating apps are destroying us, so, which is very interesting. If you look at what's happening with female behavior, women are so bombarded with, so many, with simps through Instagram, Tinder, and all these applications that they could no longer, they could no longer pair bond. And most individuals had had their tails bitten to some degree. Eventually, the entire mouse population perished. Dr. Calhoun's experiment is a classic example of a typical population and its growth when left unchecked. Research in this area continues under his supervision. Currently, Dr. James Hill has taken the basics of the Calhoun experiment to study social behavior even more closely. In his experiment, rats are used instead of mice. Healthy individuals are selected to start the population. The rats are anesthetized so that Dr. Hill can perform a minor operation necessary to the success of his experiment. A small electromagnetic encapsulated device is implanted into every rat. This small unit enables sensing devices to keep track of the movement and position of each individual in the population. After surgery, the rats are introduced to their new multi-leveled home all at the same time. The rats immediately begin to explore their new environment prior to organizing territories and nesting. Dr. Hill will trace how individuals move about in crowded situations. This movement is followed by tubular sensing devices. Every time a rat enters or passes through a tube, the unit detects and registers its presence. This constant movement is monitored by computer. Nesting activity is also studied. Dr. Hill has observed that the larger the population, the less care a mother gives to her nest and young. The same type of individuals that resulted in the mouse utopia are also emerging in the rat population. There are aggressives, asocial, and outcasts. Though these studies use animals, the findings about population growth and individual behavior are being closely compared to our own human population. Like all populations that have existed on this planet, many researchers believe that the human race has reached a crucial point in the exploit phase, a point where important decisions must be made and careful planning implemented if we are to survive. Guys, I want you to, I mean, I want you to know what's happening in South Korea right now. South Korea has the lowest birth rate in the world right now. Um, and, and, they, and they want to raise 
they want to raise the number of hours that people have worked. Let's uh, let's let's see if we can pull this up for you guys. This is absolutely insane. I tried to avoid like pulling up a video. I tried to pull up avoid pulling up an article that has a video embedded in it because I don't want to put up with that bullshit. But let me see if I can get that for you guys. Yeah, South Korea. They have the lowest population in the world. They have the lowest. They have the lowest population growth in the world right now. And what are they doing to compensate for it? This country wanted a 69-hour work week. Millennials and Generation Z had other ideas. South Korea guys, they want a 60. They want a 69-hour work week. Okay. This, so basically, they would. This would allow employers who have people working on contract, and uh, like you have a salary, salaried employees to say, well, listen, you guys are going to have to now work 69 hours for the same amount of money. So you're not going to see a pay increase, but you're going to see an upper of hours increase. You're going to have to work more if you want to keep these jobs. And these people are out of their damn minds. The South Korean government was, was, those, was this week forced to rethink uh, a, a plan that would have raised its cap on working hours to 69 per hour per week, up from the current limit of 52 after sparking a backlash among millennials and Generation Z workers. Workers in the... Ugh, the fuckers. Workers in the East Asian powerhouse economy already face some of the longest hours in the world, ranking fourth behind only Mexico, Costa Rica, and Chile. According to the OECD, a death by overwork is thought to kill scores of people every year. Yet the government had backed the plan to increase the cap following pressure from business groups seeking a boost in productivity. Until that is, it ran into a ver uh, ferocious opposition from the younger generation and labor unions. Guys, 69 hours per week. They wanted people to work 69 hours per week. That, I mean, if you're working five days a week, right? A typical work, a typical work week is five days, is five, five days, five, five, um, five hours a day, right? At five, five days a week, right? And if you're expected to work sixty nine hours a week, right? I, I talked about this in another video before. That works out to 30, 13 point eight hours. So, so round that off to exactly fourteen hours a day. So you're expected to work fourteen hours a day. And that sounds that sounds feasible initially, but let's think about this carefully. So you work 14 hours a day. How many hours a day do you actually sleep? I mean, because you only have 10 hours left. So if you're working 14 hours a day, it take it may take you anywhere from it may take you about an hour to get to work and an hour to get home every day, right? So that's about two hours right there. Let's think about this very carefully. All right, you have 10 hours left over. You're at work for 14 hours. Subtract. All right, you've got 10 hours for yourself. You've got. You've, it takes you let's say an hour to get to work, an hour to get home. So subtract that. Let's take that away. So now you have eight hours. From those eight hours, when you wake up in the morning, you have to get ready for work. So it might take you, let's say, at least half an hour to get ready for work. All right. Let's say if you're going really fast, but you know, let's say half an hour. Let's say it takes. I mean, that's 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 a lot. That's that's hell. But half an hour, half an hour. So let's say let's take off another. Let's take off another hour for that. So our half an hour to get ready for work, um, half an hour to get ready for work, and then when you come home, half an hour to get ready for bed. Right. So let's take that. Let's take that away. Take off another hour. So you have seven hours. You got seven hours, bro. Left over. And what are you supposed to do? How many of those hours are you supposed to use for sleep? How many of those hours are you supposed to use for eating? How many of those hours are you supposed to use, use for entertaining? It's entertainment. You need eight hours. Of, you need usually at least eight hours a night for sleep, right? You already don't have enough time for sleep. What about going to the gym? Nope, you don't have time. For, you don't have time for the gym. So how? What about time for cooking? Nope, you don't have time for cooking. You only have seven hours. All right. So realistically, you're going to try to get six hours of sleep, maybe less than six hours of sleep, and you're going to try to, you know, get something done. This is basically insanity. You don't have enough, you don't even have enough time to get to, you barely have enough time to live. 
So you have no free time whatsoever. They're completely taking up all of your time. This is what this is what's actually happening now, right now. All right. Raising the cap has been seen as a way of address, addressing the looming labor shortage the country faces due to the dwindling fertility rate, which is the world's lowest at its aging population. Guys, a lot of this is because of what's happened in society. Sims and women, all right? Women pushing men out of society and Sims dancing in the streets and saying how wonderful it is. Because, they, because no matter what, they will not learn their damn lessons. A Sim will never learn. A simple never learn, you know. Oh, let me see if I can jump to this video. I have a, another video. I guess it's up here. Where is it? Sim, 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 sim chronicles, right? So this is the video, the sim chronicles. So um, shout out to Jostin Jay. He's been putting in the hard work, um, and you know I left a comment on his video. You know he's been talking about how to kill your inner sim, but I said something very important on his video. I said this. <clears throat> I said this to him. I said this is an excellent video. But never forget, there are some men who choose to be simps. No matter how much red pill content they receive, simping is a way of life and a means of survival for them. These are men who cannot be saved. And when men recognize these fuckers for who they are and what they are, they need to separate themselves from them. And, you know, he responded to this by saying, this is facts. Sims can't understand logic. It's a way of life for them. So guys, this is... Sims cannot understand logic. I want you to understand, like a real Sims, the ones that, like we all we've all been Sims at some point in our lives, but there are some real Sims in this world, and they cannot comprehend shit. It doesn't matter what you tell these motherfuckers, all right? They will never change. King Kong says accurate statement. They act like they know how how the game is sad to watch. These motherfuckers are you cannot do anything for them. They will pull you down into their shit with them. All right. You've got to stay away from these motherfuckers. You've got to stay away from these motherfuckers. Guys, what do you think about all of this? You know, 80% of women only are, are only attracted to 1% of men. Seven, 7 million men, or over 7 million men, are not working at all. They've completely, between the ages of 24, 25 and 54, they've completely dropped out of society. And even million more, millions of, million more men are not are, um, just working only the bare minimum. Okay, and then with the passport bro movement, men going overseas. I mean, what do you guys think? This is this is this is MWA men walking away from Western societies and Western women. You know, how do you feel about what's happening here? And do you believe? Do you agree that Western society has entered the mouse utopia phase? Let's talk more about it in the comments. Uh, turn on notifications, never miss another video ever again. Like, share, and subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA men walking away. And cheers.